Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Budget talks are set to continue National Health Service under attack EU challenges air traffic controllers with price cut EU states deadlocked on genetically modified maize approvals Plus, Max the Seal writes, please help me I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First from our homepage. MEPs and member state negotiators were unable to reach an agreement on the European Union's long-term budget for 2014 to 2020 tonight after talks went on late into the night. The MEP negotiators had sent out a press release ahead of the talks warning that, based on the most recent text provided by the Council, MEPs failed to see how an agreement could be reached in this tripartite meeting with the Irish Presidency and the Commission. Fear not, folks, with Mr Verhofstadt rewriting the treaty rules and Mr Draghi thrashing the Heidelbergs to print euros at warp 8, we should hit hyperinflation pretty soon. Don't worry, though, I'm sure I read an article recently on how to fix that too. Oh yes, that's right, introduce a world global currency. Now, everybody, hold up your right hand and say, chip me, please. As promised, we have a special investigative report in respect of the National Health Service. The short story is the UK NHS is being primed for full privatisation, and it's going to happen much sooner than you think. In fact, it has already begun. The EU-US Free Trade Agreement facilitates the privatisation of healthcare services through its harmonisation mechanism. What does that mean? Well, it means that US and EU medical corporations will be able to monopolise the market space in the health sector, which means you will have to have private medical insurance, and the more you pay, the better care you get. Now, this article has the full details, and we have more details later in tonight's show, too. European Union regulators plan to request new powers to lower air traffic charges and shorten flight routes in the bloc, challenging national controllers in a bid to offer relief for carriers. The European Commission intends to present proposals today to tackle the national fragmentation of Europe's airspace. The draft legislation would give the Brussels-based Commission greater authority to enforce performance standards for air traffic control organisations and would open up their support services such as meteorology and data collection to competition. European Union governments failed to agree on Monday whether to approve three genetically modified maize varieties for use in food and feed, the European Commission said. The failure of the bloc's standing Committee on Food Chain and Animal Health to reach a majority either for or against means the decision will pass to an appeal committee over the coming weeks, a spokesman for the Commission said. If the Appeal Committee is also unable to reach agreement, the Commission will be free to grant EU marketing approval. What this means in short is that without intervention, the unelected 27 Commissioners that run the EU will have the power to approve GMO foods for European consumption. One should also note that these apparently perfectly safe modified foods are banned from Monsanto staff restaurants and the restaurants of Westminster too. However, whilst the kleptocrats refuse to eat them, they are apparently good for the likes of you and me. Mmm, yum yum. Max the Seal writes, They are going to build a wind farm on my river. I don't know what to do or who to ask for help. They say this is green ecology, but everyone knows it's not cost effective, and the EU says they've got to do it, but that's not true either. Can you support our course? It's my life, isn't it? Signed to oppose the planning permission at Slay the Array. Well, thanks, Max, for writing that letter, and I'm sure our viewers and readers will click through the link and take a look at the slaythearray.com website. Personally, I have big issues with wind turbine power generation. They're huge and expensive engineering projects, they centralise control of production creating a monopoly for energy companies and their production is intermittent. 
Let's take a look at just one alternative, that of anaerobic digestion. Anaerobic digesters produce a little over 400 kilowatts for each dairy cow, and in the UK we have 1.81 million cattle. Here are the results from a Farming Futures case study. It says a 250 kilowatt farm scale digester processing manures from a herd of 500 cows would cost around £1 million and earn an annual revenue of 200 to 300,000 pounds. But there are other big benefits too. Methane from the decomposting manure is captured rather than allowed into the atmosphere, and methane is 23 times more potent a carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, than carbon dioxide. The post-processed liquid digest state is a valuable fertilizer which can be produced and used at source, reducing the dependence on commercial oil-derived fertilizers and, of course, promotes organic food production. Finally, these systems are on-site. They are managed and maintained by the farmers, reducing the burden to the taxpayer. Finally, the same process can be used at sewage treatment works for human waste, and there are 65 million people in the UK. Now, links to my personal research uh, and the pages that I use to gather this information and figures are all below. Today in our video library, this longer than usual video recommendation ties in with our special report on the privatisation of the National Health Service. Brian Gerrish and Mike Robinson of the UK Column have also been working on an investigation into what's happening with the NHS in the UK. In this programme, Brian and Mike show the strategic top-level changes that have taken place in the NHS, with the appointments of corporate technocrats with little or no previous connections or indeed understanding of public health care. Now, for those who wish to skip the other ancillary items, which are also very interesting, then the viewing of the NHS segment begins at 24 minutes. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>